seems that I, I got to feel coming out of the back of these two drops. All I know is I'm just extremely excited to watch heavy oh, team fights yes. coming out. We've got Crit on a signature Earth Spirit. We've got oh. Thompson signature Invoker. Oh, yes. Oh, let's go. That's how I look indeed. The series. I'm looking forward to see what Noto can do on the support Nature's Prophet 2. They opened up with it and they went for Nature's Prophet plus Shaker as their two supports. We're going to see if we're going to see if they're going to be able to match what a Vengeful Spirit and Earth Spirit can do. Talk to me about so the no tail nature's prophet. What can we expect to see from this? He's just going to try to secure lane, probably staying top with the Drow Ranger as Earthshaker plays around bottom in the mid lane to try to put pressure on. His job is really just make sure the Drow can get some fun. Who's playing? All right, so already we see as far as position bottom, so they don't want to have the PL versus the Enigma. CEG with this early smoke movement, aren't easy to make. Fly, oh. crit. crit, fly has actually taken magic missile. We've been seeing Wave of Terror pretty much every time. They are He's really ready to hunting kill. for a kill. He is ready to kill, absolutely. We'll see if they find anything. At the moment, Topson already back on the middle lane, and up top, you have Anna hiding right there in the tree lane. So they seem to be sort of prepared for, for some sort of movement like this, and look to be unlikely uh, that they get caught out by EG's movement here. I mean, OG's level one is extremely weak, right? I'm sure he goes for the Quas White Spell because it's Topson, and that makes sure if you want to go for fights level one better, but you've got an Enigma, you've got an Invoker on your team, you've got very little actual stuns and control in order to go for those catches or fights at level one, just like the Shaker. As we see the bottom bounty rune actually ignored. Oh, oh yeah, we don't we don't see that one much. So we will we'll, we'll expect the EG to pick that one up later, unless I mean, we see the Shaker sort of, sort of roam over and, and catch winner. The fact that no one's taken it. So Jarex is able to spot that one out. Has three bounty or two bounties go for EG. They can potentially get that third one. So they are going for that full pressure to try to slow down the drow. We'll see if No Tail can push them away. Let's see how this mid lane goes. Some out versus Topson. Topson, oh, of course, he's going to have that aura and already really going at it between the two of them. Trading hits. So really, the certainly the lane to watch us. As we'll also have to keep eyes on this this bottom lane step and his Enigma backed up by Jarex's Shaker. Yeah, you'd have to imagine S4 is going to play really defensively down bottom until he starts getting some support movement from his teammates. Has to watch out for the Fissure Blocks, though, as bottom. He does get blocked, and the Eidolons actually trap him. Oh, he's in trouble there. Ah, uh, he's going to have Death Pulse up in a second, but it's not soon enough. Oh, gee. He's setting up the first but down there at the same time up top. No tail will fall. Uh, not quite quick enough for EG to get the first but as OG were just that little bit quicker. S4 really wanted to step up to try to contest these last hits because Seb is just power denying the lane. You see five denies already on that Enigma. And Jarex does get that punishment. So obviously this decision from uh, from EG to leave S4 on his own and, and run this aggressive trial lane top. Uh, uh, the, are they likely to get kills off the back of these three? I mean, I say they, they should. They, they're getting straight in indeed again on top of No Tail. They will turn towards Fly. There's a lot of right click, of course, coming out with this Drower. Look at the body blocks as well, No Tail. With the tree and set up for the kill. Nice micro there from No Tail, as to be expected. From one of the micro legends as they find themselves against this tri lane of yep. EG top. Now it's without Jarex really. Jarex just TP'd in. It's not like he actually did anything in there. As the career snipe comes out. Oh, no tail. Oh my goodness. No tail already. Certainly showing us he's going to turn that sort of passion to, to beat EG here into these sort of brilliant plays in the first two minutes. That's how you can help your invoker in that 1v1 matchup versus the TA. As the panel said, you know, you've got Drower as the invoker, but you're versus Templar Assassin, so you can't actually use that Drower over too much to your advantage. I will commit to this to and now memory. that could be the bit that could be the help right there. Even though it's already 12 4 for Sumail. And it's yeah, pretty dominant TA matchup. No tell has to be careful if he comes up. As you can see, crit in position to go on him as well as fly. No tell just keeping himself out of range of the magic missile. So flying crit won't go for the commitment on him and just sort of creating a nuisance, oh. sort of drawing flying crit's attention away from that top lane. Is S4 gonna see the bounty rune as well? Oh, I think he does. Oh he's gonna hey, get it. Hey, oh, we got it. Woo! Two minutes and 43 seconds in. He was priming it. He was just getting it better, you know? Letting it ferment. That's top. We have to go. Straight in again. Crit with the roll. Just find the portal smash. On to three, actually. Perfect angle there from Crit. But RTZ and Fly are blocked off by this, this Fisher from Jarex. And that's going to mean they can turn around OG and get the kill onto Crit. The Fisher from Jarex causing issues for EG's aggressive try lane in terms of getting a kill. Oh, Topson. Quick little heads up play there in the mid. He actually, Sumail was backed up trying to salve and he uh, stopped with the cold snap. And obviously with that courier dead, still just for 30, se 30 seconds or so. 
So Mel has to be careful. He's only got a fairy fire and a wraith band on him. So Thompson has a, a very good stronghold yeah. of that lane. And he needs He's it because Samel, as we can see, was leading the way in CS. 18 for 7 against the 12 for 3. He's Top calling lane. for his team to come bring his items. Never gone to our tees. He's able to drop a ganger across the fissure. Thompson played aggressive mid. He Samel. goes in onto Samel. Fairy fires pop. Thompson, can he finish off the kill? He can't. Samel will just survive as Crit turns towards Thompson and forces him away there as he slaps him with his stick. Samael's going to be able to salvage as well as I believe Crit did oh, him for him. And a whole nice again. again. Thompson cancelling yet another salve in his melee. Pops in there for the side right throw. Samael outplays him. Gets it with the side blades. Jarrett does go for the Fisher. He's looking to chase down Samael, but he has to back away with Crit still there, safeguarding Samael's TA. So already some fantastic sort of little interactions here between this 1v1 of Samael and Thompson here. South Council, but Samael takes the kill. Pretty cool. I think uh, one of those salve cancels that he actually got in the mid lane was because Notel put that ward behind the tower when he sniped the courier. So those, these little little things. But Thompson does dive in those side blades. And that bottom lane as well, Seb. A lot of denies on this Enigma. S4 is still for 18, but is level it, four. It's about yeah, it's about a half a level in it at the moment between the two of them. Seb having a slight advantage. Mid lane again. Good side blade hits onto Thompson. Crit rolls forward for Thompson. He's already got the the QQ walk out of there. As yes, he'll be fine. Notel won't move forward with the TP in. Some out. We'll go back to CS and of course keeping a very, very sizable advantage now against the Invoker. 24 11 on Samael's CS. Top lane, no tell. It's going to get on, but he turns with the Sprout and with the Gust on to two, but fly. Crit stand their ground, looking towards the two of them. They'll magic missile up Anna, look for the two man boulder smash. They find the angle, they do lose fly, but Crit will be able to bring down no tell in return. Rolling forward, they're chasing down Anna. Arxiz, he can't quite get to him though, as Anna's able to get his way through the trees and back under the cover of the tier one tower. Very smart to go for that, you know, bench stun onto the Drowley. You know, that's one of the majority of the damage is coming in and crit can line up the two-man stun afterwards as the trade comes out and pretty pretty close early game so this again in this mid lane samael continuing to to do some good work with the angles that he's finding with the side blades level six now as well they have to get a sentry ward for thompson in the mid lane just in case just be able to stop those pesky traps you can even farm the traps too they give a decent amount of gold too as they emphasize another ward in the mid lane. So they're really prioritizing just making sure that Thompson has an okay time. He's getting means. something, but he is, as I say, certainly struggling Radiant against Samael's TA. Oh, bottom lane, Seb leads in straight away with the black hole. Jarrett's can walk in, S4 does manage to get the ghost shroud and the heal off. No tail TP's in, looking to help finish off the kill. They'll sprout him up, Radiant and they will surround him and take him down. As they do manage to get S4 and continue to, to keep that bottom lane in favor of Seb. Top lane, EG look for the advantage to go in and collapse in onto Anna. Anna will Very survive nice, there. Gus. The Gus on to fly, making sure that magic missile wasn't going to be there to cancel the TP. Beautifully played. And as this happens too, No-Tail with that TP bottom sets up for the kill, but they can also set up the pressure of this tower. They even pop the Drow aura to make sure. Hobson getting very low once again. This lane, I mean, the, the matchup, Samael, is, he's playing it perfectly. It's a matchup where you do expect the TA to have an edge, but Samael really is just shooting ahead of Topson's Invoker. 34 for 17 against the 20 today. Top lane, looking for Jarex. Jarex not going to be touched upon there by the roll forward from Crit. So should be able to walk it off. Just have to be careful how close he comes to flying out easy. As he is sort of cornered in, Crit with eyes on him once again. Jarex with a quick enchant totem and a slap will be able to, to walk it off. Top lane, no tell. Also being chased towards. Jarex is heading over to try and help. No tell. Gets the teleport out before Fly can get in range for the magic missile. But EG themselves also able to start putting some pressure onto that top. Tier 1 tunnel. Bottom lane again to Anna with this rotation. Catching us for a little bit off guard. He does get the chance to go shroud. And Death pulls himself back up to full health. And top lane, they see an advantage. EG close in onto Nota. Artsy's doppelganger's over the fissure. Finds Nota. Magic missile from Fly. Straight out onto Jarex. Artsy's keeps his distance to avoid the stun. Goes straight back across towards the tower. They want to try and finish this tier 1 off. It's very low at the moment. As OG will pop the fortification, but they are unable to hold this tier one tower as EG will slowly but surely finish it off. RTZ should be able to get the last touch as well. That extra bit of bonus skull going the way of the Phantom Lancer. A very persistent commitment to keeping that tri lane around the top side, but they've, been, they've done a great job on the side of EG of distributing their levels. You see RTZ's level five, the two supports are also level four, while Ana was getting slowed down so much that they had to actually push this draw ranger bottom to catch up. Almost level five at least though on Ana. But in a pretty, this is a pretty unsafe position for him to be in. Yeah, pushing in very aggressively on this bottom lane. Any sort of TP or wraparound could cause the end of Anna's success down here as Crit as, does come in. As far as about to be level six, you might want to be able to get that one before they go for this. Let's see how they time it. 
Needs one more creep. Crit just looking for the angle. He's pinging the creep, There's so the he's creep saying straight it. in. Yep. Crit says, shocked him back, but Anna with the gust. Oh! Is he out? He is! Oh Anna! And the mid. gust reaction there on point mid lane. Samel getting got upon, has them out. Topson and Big Daddy No Turn out back and away as the TPs from EG come through fly, finds the magic missile, onto the Nation Prophet, the trap slows out as well, he tries to TP away, can he escape, he cannot, the damage is there from Samael, they get no tail. Whew. What an active early game we've got going, already 5-5, constant rotations on both, on all three lanes actually. As now Fly is going to take some of that mid lane, get that experience up going for those supports, they want to get those level 6s at a decent time still. And it will be actually a mech onto, onto Seb on the Enigma. So going for that quick way to just group up and take those team fights. Like the panel mentioned, you look at OG's team fight, it's very scary. When they've got the Invoker, the Enigma, and the Earthshaker, it's very intimidating what they can actually provide. Here we go. They do go for this. I, I think it may have been around that midboard. So they may be aware of this. Because at the same time, Jerex and Seb are looking to wrap around. I think they saw, I think they know that sort of the, the movement there from EG leaving Samael. So they know that Samael is vulnerable and on his own. They do have the black hole if they can close in on top of Samael, but Jarek's smoke is going to get dispelled. Samael is aware of what's going on. We'll see if EG is successful with the movement on top. They do find Anna. Fly leads him with a magic missile. Roll four from Crit straight away with the control. Has the silence into the boulder smash. Punching him down. Anna with the gust trying to get away, but the final right click from Fly comes through. They get the kill. They may lose some of their lives in return, though. There's no tail. Artizzi He's surrounded. Arteezy actually, actually managed to move across from that top lane to help out. If they won't just get one, they'll get two. Both Anna and No Tail going down. Mid lane, Thompson able to get the EMP off, stopping S4 and Samel chasing for more, but Crit, he's straight in underneath the tower, the boulder smack, stopping the Fisher from Jerex for now, he gets the silence as well, but it doesn't matter, the Malefis from Seb comes out, finishes him off, as Samel now being chased, Jerex throws out the Fisher, Thompson up to the high ground, Samel's into the trees. Doesn't quite have Cold Snap up I'll again. They actually went for a mid kill, it looks like, with the Black Hole, and I believe that S4 used the Reaper Psych to cancel it earlier in that situation. They do have earn charges on top, so he can look to get aggressive. Still for the setup. Cold snap, EMP in the urn, as you say. The damage, the combo, perfectly done there by Topson as he finishes off Vlad. And collects another earn charge. So now he's got two, so he can keep looking for those. But yeah, EMP is always one of those spells that is very devastating in this early game. Super good against the Necrophos. Yep. Makes S4's force drop very hard as he comes to these fights, especially at the moment with just sort of the phase and the two nulls. Doesn't have any sort of wand or any sort of burst the recharge. Back the tower. Indeed, kicks underneath the tower. Samael, can you find the connection? It doesn't matter. The damage from s Force Death Pulse is enough, as again, Crit certainly showing off so far on this Earth Spirit. It's been up and down, lane to lane. Three, two, and four, involved in seven of the eight kills of EG. Crit has done a fantastic job of making sure that this opening start has gone pretty nicely for EG across the map. Crit Earth Spirit, right? This is, this is what we've come to expect from this man. Seb comes forward. Does take a magic missile to the face. TP from Jerex coming in. EG starts to back up. The Fisher onto two. Samel has the trap to slow down No Tail and Seb. Put the wave of tear back in as well as the smash. No tail incredibly low. One right click will do, and there it is. And they finish it off. Jarex goes in for the walk in Echo Slam. Fly's falling low, but the Death Force heal's going to be coming over to him. So Fly, he's fine. They have managed to surround Samel, though. Samel gets left behind on the high ground. Samel gets taken down. Anna trying to chase down Fly as well, but Fly is pretty speedy. Topson gets in range, though, for the Anna Shadows. He's chasing it down here with the Ghost Walk as Fly. Still trying to retrieve, but Topson should be able to finish this one off. Another iron charge thrown out as Fly goes down. They want to play as fast as possible with this Drow Ranger. They're looking for this tower. Just want to get tower advantage. That's four. He stepped step up on. too far. Yeah, as Thompson's there with the wrap around the Gust into the right clicks. There's no chance for S4. Ooh. Between the Gust as well as even if he does get the Ghost Shroud in those situations, Thompson's there to purge it off with the Tornado. 9 to 10, 12 minutes in. It's all kicking off between these two. Thompson. But quick sort of setup on Sister Mail. Doesn't want to go for anything more. Is on his own at the moment. Those are painful though. You just eat a 400 mana burn. As he's starting to now go, he got that one point in the egg sword. So can, of course, uh, invoke those other abilities now too, as well as the ice wall and the deafening blast, which can be very nice in this game too, versus a Templar assassin. Time to smoke once again here for crit and fly. As they look to rotate over into the jungle, they've got that ward down. They see Anna farming they, alone. They feel very strong. They've got level six on both their supports. No tail, still qu not quite level six on this nature's prophet. The scan comes out though and does catch EG as they're looking for this aggressive move. And Anna's already moving away, getting himself away from this top half. Jarek's the one left behind, but he's into the trees. TP's out, 
and EG will find no kills off the back of those smokes. They can look to put some pressure onto that top tower. RTZ's been getting a lot of space on this top lane, still sitting at the top net worth on his Phantom Lancer. It's going to be a quick defusal blade timing at this rate. Yeah, and it's very good hero, very, very good game for the PL versus the Straw Ranger. If you can close the gap over and over again, can make it very tough for Anna. Anna's also gone for uh, four points in Frost Arrows instead of maxing the Precision Arrow, so he wants to be moving around. He's going to get it gone on there. Try to go with Fisher on Samael. Does have the back of the top soon. Tries to go for the combo. Doesn't actually catch on to Samael or Fly, so they're fine. Crit's able to roll up to the high ground. Malefis was upon him, but Seb can't chase. And Seb has to back off as EG starts to show the four of them in that middle lane. Arteezy's getting so much space out of this. He really is. This top lane has been Arteezy's home ground, and he's absolutely loving it. Almost taking that tier two tower as well on his own. OG really have just let him be on that top lane. They've done nothing to pressure him. This is a good timing for OG. Thompson has the spirit vessel finished. As the panel mentioned, incredibly good versus the Necrophos, of course. And bottom, they're taking a tier two. As Thompson wraps around, misses. He is going to miss that tornado. Might not matter for the kill, though. As Crit, surrounded, stuck in the sprout, does fall. As OG get that bottom tier two tower and the kill. But as we say, top lane, RTD, he pretty much got the tier two in return on his own. He's now looking towards Jarex. As Jarex comes in, looking to clear the way. But there's Fly with the setup. Swap back into the magic missile. Jarex taken out for 45 seconds with the Reaper side being slammed down upon him by S4. They're threatening high ground down here already with this alacrity draw. And flies back in, but he gets Gust, it's silent straight away, the damage, the cold snap, the right clicks, he's gone. That's one member of EG gone for the defense, Arteezy's gonna TP in as well, though, to look to hold. He got, like, half damage on the tier 3 this early on. As soon as they force reactions, they do back up, though, they don't want to take the risk of people porting behind them on that shrine. I've got the Veil now finished on S4. As we've seen, though, these, these sort of plays coming out from Thompson are incredibly harmful. He, with that full spirit vessel, so much damage yeah. from the combo, Thompson. As, uh, at the moment, 10 to 12, yeah. as you say, 1k lead for OG. But it certainly feels very close, and one could sort of ask, would OG have intended to be further ahead when they run this sort of drow lineup? And uh, so EG, despite sort of the drow or that, that favoring for OG in the lanes, they've done very well in this first 15 minutes of, yeah. of gameplay. Yep, the PL's gotten so much farm, and it was the TA matchup versus the Invoker. Sure, Topson is ahead because of all those rotations, but it just applies that pressure in the laning phase. As we did see Seb also change the build up. Originally had that mech queued up, and now we'll be just going for the pipe on top of Vitality Booster. Jarrett Jarrett's trying to pick up some farm. Does have Topson there, goes for the tornado onto two. EMP's down as well. Jarrett's trying to move into position to drop the cover. Gets Get the it. Goes now. Does he get the fish up? S4 still alive for now. He'll pop the ghost route, fly left behind. Seven Topson looking for S4. They find the vision for the cold snap. Spirit vessel down onto West 4 again as Topson grabs the double kill. But OG as well do lose two as Samael in the river did find no tail to the side of it. As Anna. Starting to play around with Roshan there. Don't know if they're going to quite be able to get away with that. Samael and Crit are still in position to, to contest this. They've got that trap down. They know they know exactly where OG is. OG's got the black hole available, though, and they know that Crit actually committed the Magnetize down bottom, which is their big team fight spell at this moment in time. They're actually going to look towards Samael in the middle lane. Fisher into the tornado. The silence does come out to stop sort of the rest of the combo from Topson coming out straight away, but Samael's been sprouted. No tap. In with the TP, but Samael had the refraction. Still able to get the blink out. Separates himself from the squad. Very nicely done there from Crit with that quick silence, making sure. So it was just the tornado coming out from Tops, and there yep. wasn't so that EMP follow up that could have caused issues in terms of keeping those refraction charges up and allowing Samel to blink away. Crit's running out of stones because of how fast this gameplay is having to go down to one. A lot of occasions that I've seen here. As the deep wards, as we saw earlier, were placed by OG and they were able to get some kills out of that. And they're going to place some up toward the top side because now their main focus is going to start to be that Roshan. So having wards around that shrine area of EG will be the most important thing for them. So Arteezy does have the Fusal. Has queued up the Manta, of course, afterwards. That standard build for the PL. Fly in the mid lane, maybe looking for a swap set up onto Jarrett. There's Jarrett going back away. Not keeping himself in range. Oh, Fly swap. So it really just has been hard to easy. One, zero, three. Not been involved in too many of the fights, but certainly has has sort of been favoring him in that sense. Lots of farm on this PL. EG's got vision of this. They're considering going up. 
They've only got, they've got three stones now, and he's committing forward. He's going straight forward. He finds the two of them, the Silence, the Silence, on to both of them, the Magnetize down as well, as immediately they lose no tail, Rateezy there with the wraparound, tops and turns, but for the Tornado to hold them back, and with the Ghost Walk, Topson will get out, so will Anna for now. Fly with the swap back onto Jags S4, moving into position, doesn't have the Reaper Siphon, in fact, flies too deep, Topson turns back in, takes down the Venge. Six set up there by Crypt, just having vision up on that high ground, gets the perfect combo, and I also believe the Enigma got the Black Hole that instantly cancelled, it looked like, yeah. Oh. Seb trying to get a position for it, but unable to. As EG does claim a small lead in the game. And gold's like very minimal. Experience also very minimal. I was so close during these first 18 minutes. Thompson more than halfway towards his Aghanim Scepter. And in a game where the fights have been as frequent as this one, that sort of strong Ags timing is going to make all the difference in terms of just a ability to interrupt sort of the team fight that EG's been trying for. Mm -hmm. It's Thompson once again on the hunt. Did go into the ghost walk underneath that, that mm -hmm. observer sentry combination. So EG will know about this. Arteezy, as you can see, already backing up from that top lane. They just really want to play around this rush. It's so important for the OG lineup as well as the EG lineup. Thompson straight back towards the mid. Fly. It's been caught out by the sprout. It's fly. Be taken down. Thompson. They're going to go straight into the pay with that. Like these, both these teams, one team has a draw ranger, the other team has a Templar assassin. This is the area that is the most important in the game. Artis is going to start to poke at them from the side with the spirit lance. Is OG still looking to be a little hesitant on heading into that pit? They don't have their black hole available. Jerax is also very low on mana. Another magnetize is back up on crit. Mm -hmm. He's got that team fight ability. So play it safe, Anna. Back to farming. Arteezy is going for the next item, Shadow Blade. Has actually deviated from the Manta. We'll see if he changes it again, but I think he wants to be able to weave into the back lines of the fight to look for this Earthshaker and this Drow. Because the their, their control is coming. It's Invoker, Enigma, and Earthshaker. It's the big control. So if he can look for those other targets, they can't actually control this PL if the rest of his team is distracting. It's Thompson just 800 away from his Agonies. Invoker yes. still. Doing very well from second highest in the net worth, and ahead of Samel. Samel, of course, on that TA, who was able to, to have that advantage in the mid lane matchup. But as we've seen from the fights, Thompson, as the Invoker, has just been able to offer that a little bit more. No Tails prepared to go for a dive already in the base here. Flight, just go for the swap, getting Seb up onto the high grab. But Flight, he's actually just going to get right click down here by the Eidolon army. As Seb claims the kill. Anna looks for the ghost on to crit, but crit did get the roll off. It didn't manage to put the stone down though because of the silence. Goes for the kickback. Anna with the double damage wants to fight. Echo. In with the echo, has the control. On to Arteezy as Arteezy gets taken out of that fight as soon as he turned up. He just got the blink dagger as well. So it was completely unexpected. EG had no idea that was coming. And now they're pushing up to the high ground. OG 21 minutes in, taking the tier 3 tower. Only two alive at the moment on EG. S4, silence. They're moving. Jarek jumps forward. Has the control. S4's gone. Dead for 40 seconds. OG threatening the melee racks here on this bottom lane. And EG, they're not going to be able to do anything about this here. 21 minutes in. OG taking the full, pretty much, set of racks down bottom. We'll see if these islands can finish off the range racks. And they certainly can. OG getting away with the speed and pressure that they need to with this Drow Ranger strap. And how they prioritize setting up to. Noto was in the base for a good 30 seconds preparing for them to look for something like that as he goes forward, does. Oh. Noto, crit. Crit through the trees, able to find him and notes out. We'll try once more for the TP, but the damage from the magnetized too much. Crit gets himself a charge on that spirit vessel. Dial are scanning. It's Jarex. He's looking to come in with the backup, Thompson and Anna. Also on the hunt. Oh. Out they go, Thompson with the setup through the trees, throws out the tornado as they'll get the trade. They'll take crit down. Arteezy oh, continuing to just try and make the most of any sort of space he sees on the map. Straight that down mid, gets a tier one tower. Pretty much has the money for that Shadow Blade on top of his diffuser, but we are really still yet to see Arteezy turn up to a fight and offer something. As that last time down bottom, as we mentioned, caught off guard by Jarex's blink dagger timing on the Earthshaker. It's just very tough for them to take any heads up, heads on fights versus OG just because how strong they are. And it's just the numbers advantage instantly. That way he wants to, but yeah, Noto was already prepared. They knew everything that was kind of coming for them, and they're already on their way over. We uh, see Jarex had just picked up the blink dagger on the right on the, on the side shop, and yeah. 
And look at this on the side of the top hearts. Easy turns up. He's like, what's up, boys? And then, bam! Jerks is in Echo Slam, and he's out of it. He's got to sit the sidelines for 48 seconds. Was not prepared for that blink dagger on Jerks at all. Courier snipe. No tell wants it, but he... Blip comes out. He actually started oh. attacking the tower, but... Oh, mid lane, Samayo. On top of Anna, Anna turns again. The Gust TP is going to work out once again. It's not this time. RTZ's in with the damage. These Gust plays, though, from Anna, just the split second, even just the quick ones that have happened, has saved his life on multiple occasions. I think Look three or four though. times. 40 seconds, no drought. EG, they see the chance. They're into the Roche pit. They can do it pretty fast themselves, as you said, with some mail. They've got the TA, they've got the Venge. Can he look for the big plays here? He smoked up. Oh, he is, and he's got the slam available. He's got his eyes on the pit. Can he uh -oh. time it perfectly? The tornado coming in for the side. Just managed Catch to catch two. him. It's pretty low. They're moving into the pit. There's the black hole. Coming out under the two of them. They've lost the Venge. The Roshan's still being focused by RTZ. Jarek's RTZ still alive with the Shadow Blade set. Finally gets taken out by Samel. But Samel's held in place by the Ice Wall. Jarek's into the pit. There's been the buyback from Fly. Samel goes down. Thompson able to fight him with a cold snap. Jarek's will tick down to the magnetized Roshan. Still alive for now. The silence from Crit out onto Thompson. RTZ double ganger still, still alive. Right. Gets on top of the invoker. Thompson falls back towards oh the pit. God. Trying to find him with the slow goes down the Roshan. They get the kill, but Crit gets the ages. Triple kill for Crit, and he's not done yet. Rolls forward, looks for Jared. Jared taken on as well. And OG, they're still fighting back. They'll find Crit. Spirit Vessel cold snap. He's down once. They'll look to set up for a second time. The ice falls down, and he gets the quick gust. Thompson goes back in, and once again, cold snaps out. He can't roll himself away. Crit will fall. As the buybacks from OG there enable them to sort of sort of settle the, the deal after the Roshan gets taken down. They did get the kill on Roche, but as we saw, Crit was able to get the Aegis, does lose it straight away. Overall, because of the buyback expenditure, was favoring EG in terms of net worth change. Yeah. But still, not necessarily what EG hoped for there. They nearly got everything. They were nearly able to sort of take it back, but the cleanup of the Crit's end from OG. Look at Crit's positioning in this fight. He was hiding in the tree, waiting for them to go for it, instantly oh, stops that black hole. Arteezy also, with the Shadow Blade pickup, we see him just kind of playing around inside the pit. He survived for so long as this Phantom Lance oh, in the fight. Oh, he's straight back in. Fuzz Nota. Arteezy's on top of him. That, that was... that was insane. Thompson. Look at the wraparound onto Westfall. Again. Go Shroud is there. Thompson quick with the Tornado. EMP combo. Someone needs to come across and help S4. As S4 just getting solo killed here by Thompson. Styling on him here with the Invoker plays. As now, looking to fly. Fly just had the back of a crit. So Thompson goes for for now. Jarex jumps for it. The fish head, the cold snap, the spirit vessel. He just does so much. Thompson finds the double kill. 11 3 and 9 on his invoker. Always has that cold snap available. That Jarex talent. Such a good combo with that spirit vessel, in particular, like we said, in the beginning, versus that Necrophos. S4 just doesn't have the itemization to remove it. Doesn't go, didn't go for Lotus Orb, didn't oh, go for the really stop. Crit straight in. They got the slow, they got the stun straight in on top of Anna. He's going to get forced to the side step. Can he keep this man alive, though? He doesn't have the black hole back up yet, but Anna with a big gust heading him back. Tornado! Thompson! He's in with the back of the meteor! Tiffany Glass coming down! Thompson with the save! Gets both of them! Oh. Thompson in Doing it big time on the main stage at the Fisher for Jarrett. It sets up for another. The Colts, that spirit vessel, no tell. He comes in to join the party. This man on his invoker in every situation finding these clutch plays. Anna also with the talent, going for that 550 Gus knockback. It pushed him so far away. Jax, he's just straight in again. There's the combo spirit vessel, cold snap. Crit just getting ticked down. Just says, well, we'll start to try and heal him up with the death pulse. As the buybacks from Arteezy and Samel do push OG away, but OG now getting a sizable advantage here in game one against EG. 9K advantage, a set of racks up as well. All three cores ahead of that of Evil Geniuses. The mobility that's coming out and the preparation it seems from OG as well as we saw no-tail in some of these situations Teleporting before the fights even start just to set up for his team and then Thompson always being there But he's what he's quite wide. He's so fast. Samuel's got to be careful He's heading out on the top then we'll see down bottom up. easy finds no tail Samuel's desperately needs this BKB if he comes out too far, Thompson or Jarex will be there with a the setup on that top lane level 21 invoker to the level 16 Templar assassin Samuel he cannot move from the spot. He does come down. So it could be fine for now. Thompson and Jarek, they're still waiting for him to sort of cross that line. 
It looks like Shimano knows. Nope. Play it cool. They know. They, they just saw the courier fly over and just stop. Yeah. So they're aware that something's going on here. Sumail's pinging it. GG. Under so much pressure. Starting really to have their backs against the wall. Each of these fights, they have to get on top of Thompson. They can't let him get away with, as you say, these sort of constant cold snaps of Sumail. Maybe coming out a little too far now, Jerex. There we have it. Finds the Fisher, the Gust into the combo. There's the slam oh. to hold him down. 60 seconds. The patience from Samel, not quite patient enough as he comes out alone. They were ready and waiting, OG, to make that play. And they get away with it. No buyback on Samel. How can EG slow this down? They don't have heroes with any deep push versus this lineup. It's a second set of racks, tier three is being a threat now. What can Arteezy do as he turns up to this fight? It's been a hard each and every time. They get a swap back onto Anna this side. Bam! Anna's gone for 80. Perfect way to start the fight, but there's the black hole. The sun strike as well. Flight gets taken down. Jarek's jumping in with the control onto S4. As the boulder smash from Crick comes out, magnetized as well, causing issues for No Tail. No Tail's taken out. The buyback straight away on S4 is Crit looking to chase for more. Gets in top on top of Seb. Seb goes with the TP out. The fish from Jarek's will allow Seb the space to escape. He caught, caught Crit with that stun. So Crit wasn't able to get that boulder smash. That, that's a very heads up play though by EG, getting that swap into Reaper side instantly before Ana gets the BKB off. And There's no hesitation. It puts an end to the push. They do lose that tier 3 tower, but they keep that top set of racks alive. Does cost them the S4 buyback, so still EG not yet to find that play to really switch around the momentum of this game. As OG Arsenal the driver's seat, we'll see it once again here. Crit was prepared. With instant the play. Yeah, instant. But uh, Seb gets a nice follow-up here with the Fissure. Gets the two-man black hole. But as soon as S4 does die, goes for that buyback, and you see OG does retreat. They don't want to overextend too much when they have this advantage right now. It still feels like such a tall mountain for EG to climb when they've got a Templar Assassin, and this is the pre-30 minutes, and this TA doesn't have a BKB. We're hitting that 30-minute mark, and Sumail doesn't still quite have it. He really needs it in order to be able to do anything versus this Invoker and the Surf Shaker. What a mess. That's Thompson. full AC yeah, on Thompson. Ready to, to really assist this sort of end game push that they're looking for. Yeah, this this they're looking at it for sure yeah. here with this item buy. They know that they've got a very sizable lead. And with their lineup, one more team fight that goes wrong for EG could certainly cost them the game, especially with some of these buybacks unavailable at the moment. Yep. Well, EG having to be careful. They've got to somehow enable Artesi in these fights. Just so hard, the amount of control that they actually do have on OG, so much team fight. I mean, is, is it not sort of the point where you feel like RTZ may even have to go for a BKB, or do you feel heart is still the right way to go? I think if he goes BKB, that's it's, it's just, he needs to have a heart. He needs to just be able to play around in the fights. If he just has to play around a 10 second BKB, then they're going to be in so much trouble. It's, TA needs one. RTZ, I don't think he can afford to go for that item. So G just starting to take full sort of war control of the map. Full Greaves complete on Seb. No Tail's got a gem out. The full group up build around the Enigma. The Guardian Greaves, the Crimson Guard, the Pipe. Negating a lot of EG's damage. Does so much for these pushes. Yeah. 30 minutes in, they're really at this sweet point. OG where, where that lineup sort of hit, hits, a, hits a bit of a peak. But they, they, and they know it. They're already ready to amp up the pressure once again as they hover around the mid lane. EG cannot afford to go one by one outside of the base. Yep, they see the top lanes pushing Samel, in. he's going to even get jumped in this position straight away. Jax with the combo. Samel's gone without buyback. No Tail goes for the Sprout. Crit with the Crit with the pull to allow a flight to get out of the Sprout. OG piping and crimsoning up. S4 looking towards No Tail. Jax priming himself on the side. Ready to blink back in. In fact, they just got the damage onto S4. S4 gets one back. Jax jumps in. Looks for the Fisher. Gets silent. Gets silent. Oh, he put the Black Hole. Oh. The, 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 the Reaper side cancels the Black Hole. But the combo for Thompson straight on top of RTZ takes him out. RTZ's dead for 80 seconds. S4, Crit and Fly getting pushed back to the base. And OG, they're going to go for another set of racks. Both cores down. No buyback on Samael. No buyback on RTZ. You can see how confident they are. They know they can clean this out. This is the last fight for EG. They jump forward. Rolls in, but immediately the Gus Jarex in again with the control. The Fisher out between the two of them. They find the... Uh, uh, they're going to find S4. They're going to find Fly as well. GG is cool. And game one in a series where I think a lot of people would have expected to see something quite fantastic from EG. OG 
They absolutely crushed it. 32 minutes in, 18k net worth. The drow lineup, the drow draft worked perfectly. The pressure, the speed that they could play at, it just never got to a point where Samail or, or Arteezy could really offer much in the fights. They were always playing from behind because of how well OG kept the pressure up. Yep, pretty much. Thompson just kept running around with this invoker, making so much happen. S4, every single time he showed his face, he would just get jumped on by like a tornado, cold slap, spirit vessel, and they couldn't really help him. S4, like Fly would come in, try to swap, but then they'd get chased down and caught even more so because of the follow-up from the Earthshaker. Just very good plays by OG with their comfortable heroes. Thompson on the invoker, just... Oh, what a way for OG to start the series. We'll see if they can keep it up in game two, or if EG can come back with some new tricks and a different...